Hello, good afternoon. I'm trying. I'm testing a new thing. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm trying something new out this day. And uh, I may have to keep working on it because I'm trying to. Um, I'm trying to link my page with uh, my YouTube page. That way I can um, go ahead and be sharing on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So I praise the Lord for what he's doing. Uh, I just ask the Lord to keep that's my ministry as it keeps growing. Because this is this is his ministry. It's not mine. It's his ministry. It's not about me. It's all about Jesus. And um we're gonna get started just in and just a short on um about I like everybody to uh, Please share and invite because we're fixing to watch something great. We're fixing to learn about the move of God. I mean, we're, we're fixing to learn. Um, let's see. How do I say this? We are fixing to. Aha, and I can do it this way. Hang out. Okay, I just put it on hang out. Let's see. Right, let's see if I can do it this way now. Praise the Lord. I'm trying every which way to my YouTube page. Because like I said, I'm trying to figure out, figure this thing out, and I don't see anywhere. Hmm. Well, I'm just gonna have to keep working on it, I guess. But anyway, God will work it out. God will work it out. Um. I just praise the Lord because this is this is gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Spiritual awakening, yeah. I'm gonna share to that. We're gonna study in Matthew twenty four today. And like I said, I don't know how I'm gonna Get it to my YouTube, but I will, I, I will keep working on that. I'm sure enough for I'm sure enough for Praise the Lord. All right, let me get to um. All right. We're going to get to um. Get started very shortly. Let's keep it in mind. I have been I'm pray, praying for the, the Lord to touch all the the ones that are um, that was was attacked, was killed over the weekend. It is terrible, terrible. Massive crime, massive shooting. And uh, I just praise the Lord every day for what He's doing. And I ask the Lord to um, hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Well, if it won't let me, is all it's showing is Google Hangouts Messenger email. Okay, I'm just going to have to add an app. So it's like, okay. Right, let's get to our let's get to our study. Matthew twenty four will be our study for today. Matthew twenty four. And I'm sorry that I have started this. Praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. All right. I will not say no more. Hallelujah. 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 But Matthew 24 is a great study. A great study. I know I'm skipping around sometimes, but like I said, I'm, I'm trying to get um, some things together. We're going to start in verse 1. How's that? We're just going to start in the beginning. Matthew 24. Lord, we just praise you for this day. We come to you in agreement. We ask that your spirit be with us. We ask that you pour out your rain on your people, Lord. Matthew 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Verse 2, And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. When Jesus left, it was desolate. The outward magnific magnificence was gone. When the holiness was gone. In less than four years, this temple would be destroyed in a bloody battle. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world what will be the sign hmm. they were speaking of his coming in triumph as Messiah an event which they no doubt anticipated would occur presently even if they were conscious of his approaching death which he had plainly prophesied to them on repeated occasions, they could not have, they could not have anticipated his succession to heaven and the long intervening church age. However, when Jesus used the term parousia in his discourse, he used it in a te technical sense as a reference to his second coming. Now, verse 4 it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name, not in the name or by the authority of Jesus, or claiming to be his followers and to be sent by him, but in the name of Messiah, or claiming to be the Messiah. Jesus warned them the very first thing that there would be deceivers. His first answer, take heed that no man deceive you. There were even deceivers then and now, but not the magnitude that there will be in the end days. Verse 5, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many.
in our day, there are many people claiming to be Christ. Worse than that, people have begun to deny that Jesus is God the Son. They are bringing him down to the level of mankind. And they are also trying to ele elevate themselves to the level of Jesus. The deception of false religion is rampant. There are more false gods than ever before. Matthew 24, verse 6. You shall hear wars and rumors of wars, so that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. There have been wars raging ever since Jesus made this statement. Wars have been on the increase in the last few years, and especially in the Middle East. Right now, there is conflict going on on every continent. Young people are being killed every day in Israel. The Arabs and the Jews have been in constant conflict. There is conflict in many of the streets and major cities in many countries of the world. The whole world is like a stick of dynamite about ready to explode. There are enough bombs already made to blow the whole world up. It is possible for some maniac to push a button and start an all out nuclear war. So certainly this part of the prophecy is already fulfilled. Verse seven, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diver places. And that's true, it's coming fast. Pestilence is another problem. Even here in the United States, pests are producing at an alarming rate. There have been tremendous amounts of in, 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 insecticide used to stop pests. Some insecticides have been banned because they have gotten into the water system. And humans have a great amount of them in their blood. We cannot say for sure, but many believe that so much use of insecticides has brought on large percentages of cancer incidents today. This too seems to have been fulfilled. Earthquakes have been on the increase. Everyone in the United States has been concerned about a large one hitting across the St. Andrews Fault that goes through California. Here again, we could say that this part of the prophecy has been fulfilled. Verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. As I said, it seems that all the above are already happening. So we can assume from that we are already in the beginning of sorrows. Verse 9, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my, my name's sake. The account of this in, in Luke, as before all these things, we do know that many of the disciples were delivered up and were martyred for the cause of Christianity. And I'm getting a book free in the mail about these three ladies that went through some, some bad, that's got some powerful testimony. I can't wait to read it. I'm going to read it and I'm going to share it with y'all. I believe that this scripture, where well, they were martyred for the cause of Christianity, that's what happened to these three, where well, they, they went through a lot of I believe that this scripture covers Christians and Jews. Jews, even in recent years, have been persecuted and martyred. Hitler killed about one sixth of the Jewish people in World War II. We hear of religious atrocities in Russia today. Many are feeling the hand of persecution. I believe it goes even farther than the physical death of those in San Francisco Christianity. In our society today, if a person truly loves God and tries to do something to further the kingdom, 
his label as a fanatic. <laughs> Our nation, which is classified as a Christian nation, and certainly did not did start out as a Christian nation, is hated around the world. The blessings from God have been on the United States because of the stand we have taken towards Christianity. However, now that so many false religions have entered, it seems that the blessings from God are being lifted. Second Timothy 3, verse 5, calls it having a form of godliness, bird denying the power thereof. Even inside the church world, there is bickering, fighting, and backbiting. The message of Christianity has been so watered down that our ancestors would not even recognize our services as having church. Even in our own ranks, some of the new messages have removed the deity of Christ. If you take a stand against the false teachings, then you are classified as being disturbed. If you truly love Jesus, it is time to be disturbed. You can see with no problem that surely this part of the prophecy has been fulfilled as well. This is the case in the next few next verse, verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Many be offended, literally cause to stumble, suggesting professing believers who fall away and even turn against one another in shocking acts of spiritual treachery. Those who fall away in such a manner give evidence that they never were true believers at all. In verse 11, and many false prophets shall rise excuse me, and shall deceive many. And that's true. Many false prophets shall rise, and others shall deceive many, as they all of them and their followers, and large numbers of them, whose faith was subverted by them, and who follow their pernicious ways, being imposed upon and seduced by their fair words, vicious pretenses, and, and licentious practices. In many churches, very little praying is going on. It is very difficult to separate the activities that are going on in the church with the activities of the world. Very few churches really have services where you can feel the presence of God. We have gotten so worldly that God really doesn't feel very welcome. But I'll tell you what, he's welcome here in my home. This is my church. This no, forgive me. This is God's church. True repentance and commitment are hardly even part of the function of the church anymore. Some churches go months and months on without one single conversation. No, without one single conversion. False prophets, teachers, preachers. No, false prophets, preachers. <clears throat> well, and other officers have brought such a watered-down version of Christianity into the church, except for the fact, oh my goodness, if you are in a church house, you would believe you were at some form of world entertainment. This, 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 I got set up for this. This, this, this message and services are appealing to the flesh. Many are being deceived. The only way not to be deceived is to know what the Bible says. Yourself. Read it every day. Ask God to help you. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. And help you discern right from wrong. Satan is very clever. And he is out to destroy Christians. And Christianity. The only weapons we have that we have to fight him with are the name of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, and the word of God. Do not be deceived. 
do not be deceived. Learn the warnings in the Bible. Be wise in Jesus. To this part of the prophecy has been fulfilled as well. Praise the Lord. Getting on to the next part. Lord Jesus, you're you are so holy. You're so worthy. Can't help but praise you. I oh, praise you. Matthew 24 continue. Now we continue. Now wouldn't you know my page is going to get small. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well Jesus is here to, to get this. I can still read it. Praise the Lord. Come on. Bring it closer. Bring it up here, don't be Lord. Let me see it. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. I thought all you had to do was just hit that thing. Verse 12. And because iniquity shall down. That's okay. I can still read it. Devil is a liar. The love of many shall wax cold. Mm, mm, mm. I told you I'd get it. And because iniquity shall abound, meaning either the malice and wickedness, this may take a little while, of outrageous persecutors, which should greatly increase, or the treasury. Um, or the treasury and hatred of the apostles. Apostates, I'm sorry. Or the heirs and heresies of false teachers, or the wickedness that prevailed in the lives and converse, conversations of some that were called Christians. The consequence of which would be the love of many shall wax coat. This would be the case of many, but not for all. For in the midst of this abounding iniquity, there were some whose love to Christ, to his gospel, Praise the Lord. And to the saints did not abate. But then there were many who zeal for Christ through the violence of persecution were greatly damaged. And through the treasury of false brethren were afraid of the saints themselves, not knowing who to trust. And through the principles of the false teachers, the power of godliness and the vital heat of religion were almost lost. And through a love of the world mm -hmm. and of carnal ease and pleasure, love to the saints grew very chilly. Verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. True believers are protected by the power of God through faith for salvation. 1 Peter 1, verse 5. The guarantee of our perseverance is built into the new covenant promise. God says, I will put my fear. I will put the fear of me in their hearts so that they will not turn away from me. Jeremiah 32, verse 40. Mm. Those who do fall away from Christ give conclusive proof that they were never truly believers to begin with. 1 John 2, verse 19. To say that God secures our perseverance is not to say that we are passive in the process. However, he keeps us through faith. 1 Peter 1, verse 5. Scripture sometimes calls us to hold past to our faith. I love the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 10, verse 23. And also, it's in Revelation 23. I mean, Revelation 3, verse 11. Excuse me. Warns, or warns us against falling away, which is in Hebrews 10, verse 26 through 29. We see the words that he, he that shall endure until the end. You see, 
like what some ministers would have you believe, there is a terrible time of testing. Many ministers have their congregations believe that there will not be any problems. If you have your life right with God. Endure does not mean good times. Endure means hang on in the face of adversity. If we are to be saved, that seems to be our lot. No one knows for sure how soon the end of the struggle will be. Our job is to hang on and give everything we have to God. He will help us if we will resist the enemy. Verse 14, in this gospel of the kingdom, shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. You notice how I said, it will preach, be preached in all the world. It's got to be preached in all the world first. Verse 15, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, the prophet stand in the holy place, and so read us, let him understand. All right, let's go on to, uh, there's so much of this to go through. i am tell you, verse 16. And let them which be in Judah flee into the mountains. And um, verse 17, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Verse 18, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. These directions were followed as it is said that the Christians warned by these predictions fled from Jerusalem to Pella and other places beyond the Jordan, so that there is no evidence that a single Christian perished in Jerusalem. Those in the field were not to return for personal items, but were to flee for their lives. This is an emergency situation. Probably like it would be in the large cities if a tornado or a bomb alert were to go off. The main idea is to get away as fast as they can, not worrying about what about that left behind. Verse 19, 20, and woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that ye that your plight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Therefore Christ directs to pray to God, who has to dispose of of the events, of all events, and of the timing of them, that he would so order things in the course of his providence that their plight might not be in such a rich season of the year when traveling would be very difficult and troublesome. I didn't give me no more coffee, do I? Huh? I don't point me just a little bit at a time. Verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. If Christians do not realize that they will be taken out of the world before the great tribulation begins, they could become very discouraged looking forward to those years. The realization of what awaits the unsaved following the rapture ought to motivate every believer to win souls before it is too late. This verse, you can easily see why the rush to get out. If this was the siege that took place when Jerusalem fell to the Romans, then close to a million were estimated to die. I tend to believe that this scripture was not only for that terrible time, but it's also speaking of another terrible time that will come when the Antichrist begins 
his rule in the tribulation period. Verse 22, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Verse 23, then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there believe it not. One would say he was in such place, and another that he was in such a place. And so they stirred up the people not to leave and to deliver up the city after the city was taken and destroyed. Verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, and so much that, if possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And that's, I just read that. That's in the Bible. False prophets are doing more damage to the Christians. At least if someone proclaims he is Christ, those of us that know the scriptures recognize right off that he is not. False prophets are another thing. They come in with a message so close to the truth and many times doing miracles. The only way you can tell the difference is to listen carefully to every word and check it out with the Bible. Any message that does not elevate the name of Jesus is a suspect right on. God the Father is to be reverenced. Christians must be a peculiar people. Separated. You might ask, separated from what? But the answer is the world and its ways. As I, as I have said before, if it pleases the flesh, there's something wrong with it, generally. God would not be mocked. He wants his people holy and righteous without spot or wrinkle. We cannot have one foot in earth and the other foot in heaven. We have to make up our minds who we will follow, God or Satan. The only way that it is not possible to deceive the very elect is because they have studied and understood through the Holy Spirit, the scriptures. Just one wrong word will trigger a red flag in their brains. Pharaoh's magicians could do signs and wonders. Just be careful and check out everything with the Bible. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you for your word of truth. Oh, Father God. Oh, Father God. Help me get this out, Lord. Praise your name. Help me get this word. This is a powerful teaching, Lord. No wonder I was being it. Whoa. Oh, uh, verse 25. Behold, I have told you before, which when those things come to pass, it would furnish a considerable argument. Praise the Lord. Bless whoever was watching and has left. That's okay. It would furnish a considerable argument in proof of him as a true Messiah against all these false ones. Showing him to be omniscient, omniscient, and so would serve to establish their faith in him and be a means of securing him such deceivers. Praise the Lord. Verse 26 and 27. Wherefore, if they say, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Verse 27. Whereas the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the, sun, the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. Many would be looking for him in the desert, many in secret places. But he said it would be useless 
to be looking for him, looking in that manner. It was useless to look to any particular part of the heavens to know where the lightning would next flash. In a moment, in a moment, it would be blazing in an unexpected part of the heavens and shine at once to the other part. So rapidly, so unexpectedly, and so unlooked for a quarter would be his coming. See Luke 10, verse 18. Zechariah 9, verse 14. There will be a magnificent light that in appearance looks like lightning. When Jesus, the Son of Man, comes back, it will not be a secret. The light will be so bright, everyone will know. Verse 28, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Amen. Verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. And the power of the heaven shall be shaken. Verse 30. And then shall appear the son of the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Jesus went to heaven on a cloud, and the angels told the disciples that were looking on that he will come back. The same way he went. Here is the fulfillment of the prophecy. He truly will come back in the clouds. But in power and great glory. This is when we will see him in all of his heavenly attire. We will know for sure who it is. With his eyes like flaming fire. White flowing hair. Feet like burning brass. Then he will be king of kings, Lord of lords. Of course, he always has been. But then we we recognize him as that. Verse thirty one, and he shall send his angels mm. with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Amen. You can find that also. Look in Revelation 20, verse 4. Verse 32 and verse 33. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Matt, so likewise ye when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Signs are indications that Christ is about to return to earth. However, there are conditions that suggest the rapture will happen soon. No one will ever know the date of Jesus' return until he comes. Still, there are certain things happening in our world to suggest that his return may be very close. Israel's return to the promised land is one. Verse 34, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away, shall not pass away, these things be fulfilled. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. This is called the day of the Lord, which is a technical term pointing to the special intervention of God in human history for judgment. Mm. 
The Old Testament prophets saw the final day of the Lord as unequal darkness and damnation. A day when the Lord would act in a climatic way to vindicate his name, destroy his enemies, reveal his glory, establish his kingdom, and destroy the world. It occurs at the time of tribulation on earth. Revelation 6, verse 17. And again, a thousand years later, at the end of the millennium kingdom, before the creation of the, of the new heavens and the earth, which we'll find in verse 13. Revelation 20, verses 1 through 21. We know that somewhere in the future, that heaven and earth will pass away. Because we read, we read, we, we still, we shall have a new heaven and a new earth. Jesus is the word of God. He is also eternal. By this, we know that the word is eternal. Verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I raise a house. Right, it's getting small, Megan, but that's all right. Because God's going to take care of it. Praise the Lord. Verse 37. Come on, get bigger. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of some be, of men be. Verse 38, for as in, in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. They was doing partying, doing things on their, their, their worldly things. Verse 39, and knew not until that the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Lord of the Son of Man be. Oh, amen. It gets good. When Jesus returns, it will be too late to decide to accept him. It was too late for the people of Noah's day after it started raining. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I lost. I don't know what's going on here. But somehow I lost. Help me, Jesus. I lost verse 40 and 41, but that's okay. I had heard it once before that them two verses was not in the Bible. I'm going to find out for sure. Not in all the Bibles, I mean. Matthew 24. It don't show it. I'm telling you. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Oh, well. The strongest reason to take the separation depicted in this message, in this passage, as the reference to one's taken away in judgment. It's like the days of Noah. We're not prepared in the days of Noah. We're taken away in judgment. Two. So try to... Verse 40 and 41 drive that point home by giving a couple examples of the coming separation that will occur at the time of judgment. And shall two be in the field? 
The one shall be taken and the other left. There it is. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. I've heard people say this means the rapture. You can't bring in the rapture here. This is long after that. This is talking about taking in judgment. They're left to go into what? Into the kingdom. And they become those who populated the millennium kingdom. Praise the Lord. The separation process is described in the judgment of the sheep and goats in Matthew 25, verse 31 to 46, where he takes the goats on the one hand and sends them into everlasting punishment. His sheep, on the other hand, gives them into the kingdom. So they are left. Oh, I feel the spirit all over me right now. I'm praying for this. Oh, very important. They are left for the kingdom. So it is this that we have to keep in mind. The future generation will be warned for three and a half years. And the fact is, they're being warned right now. Oh, man. And the fact they've been warned ever since the New Testament was written. Whatever generation it is that will be alive when that happens, that could be this one. But they're, they're not going to wake to it until they were taken away in judgment. Verse 42, watch therefore for you know not what hour your Lord does come. This will be an individual calling. You cannot hang on. All right, Jesus, help me out here. I'm losing my place. I rebuke this in Jesus' name. Come on back. Praise the Lord. You cannot hang on to someone and take them with you. Each individual will be judged whether they will rise to meet Jesus or be left. Whether you see in these passages that someone you work with every day may not make it. We should witness to everyone we come in contact with, especially to our families and friends. Time is running out. We must get them saved now before the trumpet blows. We should be anticipating his coming and praying. Verse 43, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known and what watched the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Christians must watch for the Lord. We must not decide that he is delaying. His coming and getting get lax in our worship. Some so-called Christians today are falling away getting pretty rapidly. Some are still sitting on the pews of the church building, but just in form only. They are looking for entertainment in the church. Worship should be reverently seeking the will of God in everything. God wants our love, but he also wants us to reverence him and be obedient to him as well. Verse 44. Oh, help me get this out, Lord. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Oh, yes, Lord. Be ready when the trumpet blows. Do not let salvation wait until tomorrow. It might be too late. Just when we think he is not coming, it's just the, it's just the hour he will. Verse 45. Who then is the faithful and wise servant? Whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Oh, praise the Lord. Verse 46. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Oh, praise the Lord. Jesus will. He will reward those who are faithful. 
Jesus said the person who is a servant is the greater. A wise servant is one who does not weaken the faith. This type of faith will stand up in famine or any other catastrophe that might come. Lord Jesus, mm -mm. I rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus. I will get this message finished. Praise the Lord. Get your hands off my laptop, off my phone, off my tablet. Praise the Lord. Oh. Give me a second. Praise the Lord. Help me, Lord. I rebuke anything that comes against me as I do this reading for the Lord. This is God's word. This is not my word. This is God's word. Okay. This type of faith will stand up in famine or other catastrophe that might come. Verse 47. 47. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. He shall make him ruler over all his goods. We'll honor him with greater things. Good. Gifts. Bestow a larger degree of gospel. Light and knowledge on him. Make him more useful in the church and will cause him to inherit all things in the other world. All glory, happiness, and bliss. Verse 48. Oh, praise the Lord. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My del Lord delays his coming, then begins to think that either he will not come at all to call him to an account for the use of his time, his gifts, and talents, or will not return in a long time, or with pleasure to his mind, perhaps may not return at all. Verse 49 shall begin to spy his fellow servants. And to eat and drink with the drunken. Oh, praise the Lord. This servant was vexing and burdened. Then with trapping rites and ceremonies and, un and other unnecessary things. That was wounding, grieving, and offending weak minds by his conduct and example. And persecuting the saints as as of them as cannot come into everything in his way of believing and practicing. Oh, such servants and stewards have been and are in the church of God now. And especially the ministers of God compromising with the world. They actually are losing the holy reverence and fear that we all should have. The Bible says the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. The Bible is very plain as well but about not fellowshipping with the worldly verse 50 the lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him in an hour that he is not aware of oh praise the lord in verse 51 and he shall and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that's in the book of Matthew. The, hip the hypocrites, they are spoken of here. Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I see gold on my, oh my word. I see gold on my, oh my. Lord, I give you praise. I am seeing something on my phone I've never seen before in my life. It's like, oh, I wish I could show it to y'all. Oh, uh, oh, it's face of gold and silver. And, oh, hypocrite. Mm, weeping, gnashing of teeth. 
These are those who are cast, who shall be cast out into outer darkness. This is an image of future punishment. It is not improbable that the, <laughs> the image was taken from Roman dungeons or prisons. They were commonly constructed underground. Oh, praise him. They were shut out from the light of the sun. Where is this coming from, Lord? It's so beautiful. They were, of course, damp, dark, and unhealthy, and probably most filthy. Masters were in the habit of constructing such prisons for their slaves. Oh, my word. Go back. Go back. Oh, Lord. I got to finish reading now. I got to finish. Oh, Jesus. No, let me go get back. I got to finish that. So once we finish it, help me out here, Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. It gets smaller every time I go back, but that's fine. I'm out through. I'm about to get the word out. The Lord is sending his pe oh, message to the people through his word. Father God, thank you, Jesus, for letting your light shine. Oh, my word. They were commonly constructed underground. They were, they were of course damp, dark, and unhealthy. Masters were in the habit of constructing oh, such prisons for their slaves, for the unhappy prisoners without light or company or comfort. Spent his days and nights in weeping from grieving and vainly gnashing his teeth from indignation. The image it expresses. The fact that the wicked, that our laws would be shut out from the light of heaven. And from peace and joy and hope. They will weep in hopeless grief and will gnash their teeth in indignation against God. And complain against his injustice. What a striking image of future. Whoa, go to a damp, dark, solitary and squalid dungeon. See a miserable and... and Enraged victim, add to his suffering the idea of eternity, and then remember that this, after all, is but an image, a faint image, or of hell. Praise the Lord. Lord, I give you praise for that word. Thank you. Confirmation, Lord. Lord, I just got to stand up praise you. I don't know you're going to give me the strength to do this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, you help me get the word out, Lord. You help me. Praise the Lord. I raise the hallelujah to your name, Lord. Oh, Jesus. If it wasn't for, if it wasn't for your grace, if it wasn't for your mercy, where would I be, Lord? Where would I be? Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us white as snow? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, fresh. I don't even know the words to that song. But that's okay, Lord. You know what I'm trying to say? You know what I'm trying to say to you, Lord? But there's no way. We can do it without you, without you, Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise the Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you for helping me get in the word. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Yes, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome. I've got to play a song before I can stop because, and this is, oh, God ordained. Oh, praise God. Because the Holy Spirit is here. But I am just saturating. Thank <laughs> you. 
through my child heed my warning heed my warning go and preach to the world let them know that I am pleading for their souls I'm pleading for their souls I'm pleading for their souls they must turn from their wicked ways before it's too late. They must turn before it's too late. I have spoke the word through my child. Heed my warning. Heed my warning. Jesus, my Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Oh, Jesus. Oh, holy, 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 our Lord. Lord, we just praise you. We just worship you. We just holy. You're holy, 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 holy. Let your living heart, oh, praise the me. I will praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your Lord word. Oh, thank you for your presence, Lord. You are definitely welcome. You are always welcome in my home. Always welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We'll give you praise. We'll give you honor. Oh, if you not got yourself right with the Lord, 
please do it now. All you got to say is, Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Come into my life and change me. Creating me a new person. Creating me what you want me to be. Take me out of the way and use me for your glory. That's all you got to do. Talk to the Lord. Let him know that you are asking to be a child of the Lord. That you're tired of living in sin. Amen. God bless all of you. I am in the presence of the Lord and I got to go. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have a blessed day. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.